Okay, folks, so I'm going to uh, have another go at recording the um, structure of Archie's Veins and Capillaries video uh, from Unit 2 because the sound was a bit um, sketchy. Um, so, this is just a, basically a rehash of, of that, that information. I will probably remove the other video. Um, so this is the only one that's the other better quality one. So to start off with, we're going to look at the difference between arteries and veins. Some of this you should know from National 5 already. You should be able to tell me that arteries uh, carry blood away from the heart uh, rather than towards like veins, that they have thicker walls than veins as well, that they contain higher pressure blood than veins. Those things are pieces of knowledge that you should have taken from National 5 and brought into the higher course. Um, we're now going to look at a little bit more detail, but those facts don't change, so try and bear them in mind. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw the cross-section of an artery and the cross-section of a vein to allow them to, com to be compared. Now, in terms of their actual diameter, there really isn't any difference between an artery and a vein. What there really is, the, the main difference is as, as you know from National 5, the thickness of the wall, but in actual fact, it's not really just the thickness of the wall in general, it's the thickness of the muscle layer, okay? So, arteries and veins both have an elastic layer, around about the same size, all the way around the outside, so that's an elastic layer. And an elastic layer is exactly the way it sounds, it's, it's like elastic, it can stretch to get bigger, and then because it's been stretched out, it will contract back to its, its previous size. That's particularly useful in arteries, which, as you remember, contain the higher pressure blood. Um, the thickness of the walls of arteries and veins, really the difference comes from the thickness of the next layer in, which is muscular tissue. So arteries have got quite a thick layer of muscle all the way through them. That is... Um, essential to deal with the high pressure blood that we've mentioned previously. Veins have got a much thinner muscular wall, far thinner, but it does the same kind of, um, does the same kind of thing. Now on the inside of the muscle, I'll do this in a different colour just to try and show that it's there because it is quite a thin layer. That layer on the inside is the epithelium or the epithelial layer um, and that's found round the inside of the muscular layer in both arteries and veins but that will also help highlight something that's very important to understand about veins because I've drawn them in a slightly different, a darker colour you can hopefully see that arteries have a far smaller lumen now the lumen is the space in the middle of the artery or the middle of the vein where the blood actually moves through you'll see that the lumen is far narrower as I said in the artery than it is in the vein oh I've written the word vein there rather than the word lumen so the lumen is the space the blood moves through and that has a lot to do with the, the pressure difference um, you know basic physics dictates if you take a liquid the blood being a liquid and force it into a smaller space then the pressure will increase so it's very um, obvious then that this small space is going to contain higher pressure blood. Now that's not the only reason why arteries contain higher pressure blood because the blood, remember, in an artery has just left the heart. So it's literally just been pushed out of the heart. Um, so it will have higher pressure blood as a result of that as well. So um, that is basically everything you need to know about the difference between arteries and veins. To recap, they both get an elastic layer around the outside. A muscular layer which varies in thickness, so arteries have thicker muscular layers than veins. You then have this interior layer called the epithelium, which you may remember from unit, um, the immunology unit. We talked about epithelial layers as being these, this sort of like protective layer, um, perhaps to pre prevent um, things from getting deeper into the body if they're in the bloodstream. Um, the epithelial layer and then because I've, as I said I've done that in a darker colour you can hopefully see that the lumen i.e. the space in the middle of the artery is much narrower that's as a result of the bigger thicker muscle than it is in the vein which has got a much thinner muscular layer alright so that and, and the arteries and veins job really is just to get blood from one place to another in the body the real business of blood though 
uh, is really for things to get in and out of cells in the body. So th for things to be able to get in and out of muscles, things to get in and out of our organs, uh, for oxygen to be delivered to all the cells of the body, things like that. Now th that's the real business of blood and the real business of the blood is only able to be done with the help of capillaries. So for that reason I'm going to rub the board completely, I'm going to sort of um, go back to drawing a big version of a capillary. So try and in your mind have arteries and veins quite separate in your mind in terms of the things you need to know. Have them separate from capillaries. Yes, those are the three types of blood vessel, but capillaries have a completely different role um, from just this transport of blood from one place to another. So take that out of the way just now. The main thing that you probably will remember about capillaries um, is that they're very, very thin. They have really, really thin walls. In fact, their walls are only one cell thick. Um, so in comparison to an artery or a vein, which is quite visible, uh, a capillary is almost like a thread. Uh, really, really narrow. Okay, so there's a, a section of capillary with its really, really thin walls. The light seems to be going a bit crazy. I'm hoping you can all see that okay. Um, sorry, okay. Right, so you've got these wee thin walls. And because these are so narrow, you've got to think about where's this blood coming from? So the blood is coming from arteries. So they are quite high pressure already, but by the time the blood gets into an artery, it leaves arteries, it goes into little branches called arterioles, and then eventually the blood gets forced into these really tiny wee narrow um, blood vessels called capillaries. So as um, hopefully you'll understand by now, the pressure increases hugely. The pressure from the blood in the arteries increases so that what the blood when the blood enters the capillary it has reached a really really high level of pressure so what happens is anything that is small and soluble enough gets forced out of the capillary because the pressure goes up and everything that's small enough gets forced out through these thin walls that process is called pressure Filtration, pressure filtration. And um, so the, the pressure goes up, it forces materials like oxygen, like glucose, uh, substances out of the blood and into the area where they need these things. Now, um, generally speaking, we're talking about cells here. So you'll find a tissue will be made of clutches of cells. Remember, all differentiated into the the same type, or certainly a group of them, eh, a tissue. Um, but the material doesn't go straight from the blood and straight into the cell. Instead, actually, it's surrounded in a second fluid, which we call tissue fluid. So this blue that I'm putting in here um, lets you sort of see that, in actual fact, cells don't all necessarily have a direct connection to a capillary. They've got this uh, area here called tissue fluid where the stuff, whatever that stuff might be, the substances, the glucose, the oxygen, gets forced out into first. Then what will obviously happen here is you're going to end up with a quite a high concentration of these materials that are being pushed out. So by diffusion, substances will then be able to move into the cells from the tissue fluid. The, uh, the vice versa can also occur as well. Things like carbon dioxide will move out of the cells and into the tissue fluid and then from the tissue fluid other things can be reabsorbed back in. Waste products that the cells trying to get rid of. So you've got to understand that this tissue fluid is a kind of region, almost like a buffer between the capillary and the actual cells of the organ that the stuff's been delivered to. Um, now the majority of tissue fluid is blood plasma. Blood plasma is the liquid, you will maybe hopefully remember from National 5, blood is made up of 
uh, red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets floating around in with the majority of blood which is this liquid called plasma. Most of the plasma is getting forced out at this point into this tissue fluid. So tissue fluid is largely the same as plasma. The only thing it lacks, uh, you see this in your notes, is you have some things called plasma proteins. Now, because of our knowledge so far, we should understand plasma proteins are quite large. They're large, big molecules made of lots and lots of amino acids all joined together. So they're not small enough that they can be filtered out through pressure filtration. So the only real content difference between blood plasma, oops, blood plasma and tissue fluid is that tissue fluid does not have plasma proteins in it. They stay in the bloodstream. Everything else gets kind of forced out. Now the majority of tissue fluid gets reabsorbed back into the blood. Once it's been forced out, it'll be reabsorbed back in and then a, a whole bunch of other uh, tissue fluid will get forced out and back in. Um, the majority of it, as I said, gets absorbed back into the blood, but some of it, some of it goes to the lymphatic system and makes up a liquid called lymph. Now lymph is, um, you don't need to know too much about lymph, suffice to say that it's there and that we have a network of um, vessels around our body called the lymphatic system that carry this lymph around. Um, lymph uh, is helps to transport parts of the immune system, so some white blood cells, some uh, proteins and signaling molecules to help the, the uh, white blood cells operate, antibodies as well. And that's why when you're ill, your lymph nodes, which are, you know, you get two here, that's got two under your arms, you get two just to the inside your hips as well. When you're not well, those will swell up and it's a sign that your body is fighting infection, that your lymph nodes are swelling up. That's just a by the by and I really don't like to go on tangents in these videos, so don't worry too much about that. But suffice to know that some of the tissue fluid isn't reabsorbed back into the blood, but instead is absorbed by the lymphatic system and travels around the body as lymph. Um, and that is pretty much everything you need to know about this topic. Now, bear in mind that this topic goes along with the heart topic. So before you tackle the homework I'm going to post today, I need to make sure that you are very clear that the homework is not just going to be about artery structure, vein structure, and, um, and pressure filtration at capillaries. It will also be about the heart and that's all in a separate video. So make sure you've watched both of them plenty of times so that you've paused, rewind and everything else. Um, the one thing I've just remembered that I didn't mention and when we talked about arteries and veins, when we talked about the fact that veins have much lower pressure blood, partly because of the wider lumen, but partly because the blood has just been, it's been ages since it's been pumped out of the heart. So it's really, really slow and sluggish. Um, in some veins, so for example, veins that are carrying blood up from your toes all the way up your leg and up your body towards back towards your heart again, gravity is going to have a lot to do with that. Gravity is going to be trying to pull that blood down. And because it's not particularly high pressure, there's a danger that the blood can possibly be going backwards. And as we hopefully remember from National 5, what prevents the backflow of blood are veins. It's not veins, valves. So valves are found in veins. Uh, veins um, contain these structures called valves to prevent the backflow of blood uh, as a result of how low pressure it is. Arteries don't need valves because the blood is fairly it's shooting in one direction and it's really not going to go backwards. Gravity's got no control over the fact an artery is, you know, you've got an artery which runs from the top of your heart up to your brain and there's no way gravity's stopping the, 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 the beat of the heart getting blood up there. So you don't need air valves in arteries, but veins do need them as a result of that lower pressure. So that's just one thing to, when you're, you know, watching this whole video, think, oh, I need to remember that when he's going over the structure of arteries and veins. So, yeah, that's pretty much everything that's covered in that video. But as I say, make sure to watch the heart video as well before you tackle the homework and make sure you're quite comfortable with the knowledge in both those videos. Thanks.